took this vise up at a estate sale. As you can see, it's a Wilton woodworker's vise. I've seen a few things on the internet. Some of the guys said that they couldn't get theirs to function or a part was worn out. Well, I don't think a part's worn out. And I'm going to show you in just a few minutes on that nut that the shaft uh, spins on. You can see here, this slides up. And what this does is when you have it sitting on the edge of your bench, if you need to uh, have something sitting out here, you put a what they call bench dog in the your bench somewhere and then you can screw this down and it pushes against uh, whatever object you have here this one was missing a pin made the pin out of a bolt just stuck the bolt up in a, a drill press used a file and and filed this round this doesn't look really like the original but it functions and later on i'll uh, use some epoxy or some kind of cement I hadn't decided whether I'm going to use anything real permanent. That way you can get this this piece out of here if you want to pry it out. Let me get it up. That's what it looks like. It's not screwed in. Some of the model vices by other companies, they have threads in them, but this doesn't. And uh, I'll show you uh, what kind of lubricant I use. You don't want to use any uh, oils or anything because you don't want to get it on your wood if you do any refinishing. This model is what they call a W963. That's the model number right there on this vise. I don't know when it was made. They make one about like it nowadays, but it's got a pin up here and it's got a little swivel head. But uh, I'm fixing to show you now how to take it apart and what the problem is. Some of the guys are... Uh, complaining about but I want to show you how it functions first of course to close it just uh, you start screwing it and of course it closes as you can see I'm pushing back backwards and it won't go back all you have to do to go back is turn this handle like that and it releases that pin and then you can slide it back and forth that's the way it's supposed to work right there. And then if you want to screw it tighter, you just keep going. And it catches that again and starts to uh, tighten up. I'll flip it over and show you what it looks like on the bottom side when it does that. By the way, this piece is held in by this little spring. And I'll show you how that sets in there too. It took me a little bit to figure out which way it went because it fell out. And, but you can see it's got a, got a curve on it. It's got a little piece at the bottom too. Now this is the piece, you can see how it moves back and forth. Here's the tighten up and you see it rotating to this side. And when you go want to release it, you just turn it and it rotates this other side and it frees it up. You go to tighten it up again, it rotates it again, and it locks it back in place. That's the way this thing is supposed to work. I'll drive this roll pin out back here and take this off it. And show you what it looks like. So when you, I have these type of uh, drifts. They have a little ball on them. These are made for roll pins. That way, when it sets, it'll set there in that ball to hold it in that roll pin, and it'll keep it from moving around. You can see I'm moving it, and it'll hold it and center it. This plate also, this whole. There's a distance is further from the top than it is to, to the bottom. So make sure your hole when you put it back together is toward is closer to the bottom than it is at the top. Of course, when you slide that off, this piece comes out, and you can see in here it only has threads. It only has threads on this side over here. There's no threads on this side. Also, you can see this pin right here. It floats up and down. Get this pin out, just stick a screwdriver, and probably easy, you don't want to bust your spring. This is like a little nail, and I don't know if it'd pick up on camera, but you can see it's got uh, some spirals in it. And those spirals is what grabs the uh, metal and holds this pin in. 
And you can see how this spring comes down here and this dips down here on the end. So make sure you have it on the right direction. Now here's where some people were, I guess, getting the idea that this was supposed to have a, I guess, a raised area to fit in these acne threads. Maybe to help guide it or something. I'm not for sure what they were thinking. But I, I was thinking that too when I first started that I was going to have to weld this up or something. It's probably going to pick it up, but there's an actual mark right here. And it's really hard to see. That's just where the acne threads have been rubbing on it. If you get a magnifying glass and you really look at this, you can see right in the center of this, there's a little dot from where they've had it on the lathe. And they turn this on the lathe, and the other side, of course, it's got one too, when they put it on the lathe. So they turn this down. There, there were no uh, protrusions on the end of this to fit into these uh, grooves of the acne thread. I don't use any type of oil lubricant on this because if you've done any woodworking for a while, you know if you use oil on something, that sawdust is going to get on it and it's going to clog it up. This is what I put on it, Johnson's Paste Wax. It'll protect, uh, keep it from rusting or protect it. You can see it gets in here, dry it up a little bit. I don't know how it's gonna work in the winter time. It might make it a little bit harder to slide back and forth, but you don't need a very thick film. And you definitely don't wanna put a thick film of paste wax on this pen. It needs to slide back and forth really easy and function the way it should. The only reason I put a little wax on it is to try to keep it from rusting. To put it back together, of course you just drop your pin in there. There we go. Just tap it in. That's all it takes is right there. I'm going to put it back together. Turn that upside down again. And start sliding these on. Of course you got to pick up on your center there. And when you set this in here, you may have to reach in here and push that pin up a little bit to hold it up to get past those the shaft. I was able to do it with the finger. That's all it takes right there. Just put this on. Be sure to have that small part or the narrowest section toward the bottom. Just drive your roll pin in. Uh, that's how it functions right there. Now it's released. You can slide it back and forth. And I don't know where they got the idea. I guess those little wear marks. They probably thought something had wore off of it. But there's no such thing as needing something on the end of that pin. I noticed some of the maybe newer models, they had a cover that went over this, but this doesn't have a cover. You see it, there's the newer ones. It had a screw here and a screw here that held a cover down on it, but these older models, I guess, don't. And uh, to put this back together, of course, take your pin out. There's a little slot inside here. And the way this goes, you can see how it's curved. You want, you want it to curve in this direction toward the front and that little part right there toward the bottom. Let's get something to hold it in there. You can see the how the spring is resting against inside that slot that they have there. And just push this in. That's all it takes right there and you're good to go.